anxious about the whole Inquisition thing. They're not shooting at you. But as you get closer, basically the cleric will descend from um, a higher platform and basically bar your path as you see a group of soldiers loading the warhead onto an elevator and riding it up to bring it up to a position where you can just see the back of the captain's head uh, on a catwalk above you. And as a, as a member of the Ecclesiarchy and a holy member of the Imperium, you stand with a declared traitor. This whole ship has been declared traitor. We were found wanting by the Adeptus Sortes. Regrettably, they did not have the opportunity to finish their divine work before disrespectful and hateful creatures pretending to be inquisitorial agents tore them away from their sacred duty. I weep for those poor sisters having been so easily duped, but the captain has shown me just how far the Omega has fallen. This must come to pass for the sanctity of all the souls aboard this damned ship. And did you not think that the sisters may have failed in their duty because they were found wanting by the emperor and were led astray by whoever gave them the orders? Uh, give me a roll. What would this be? Uh, it's fellowship-based, uh, kind of philosophy, technically. Um, but, uh, let's see, do you, you don't have... Uh, yeah, you don't really have... Trained in, yeah, you, you have, have military is... training and a little bit of tech, so you don't really speak this guy's language per se, but you can still try and make this as, like, a charm rule, basically. Oh, this fails. <laughs> well, I'll roll for him in private. He, he'll kind of scoff at you and saying, well, the sisters may have failed, but we shall not, for we are doing the divine work of the emperor. Uh, what he's armed with is pretty much just a banner staff, it seems. Hmm. And stand aside, I will speak with the captain. If not, I will go through you. So you wish to speak with the captain? Give me a roll for that. That's better. I shall roll for him in private. Hmm. He will turn his head slightly so he can still keep an eye on you, but he will uh, shout up. Gracious Captain Lob, there is a woman here declaring herself a member of the Inquisition who wishes to speak with you. Shall I show her the Emperor's mercy? And uh, who wants to roll? Now, I guess I should do this. I'll do this roll publicly. So, um, Abo Bob, you want this number to be low. Huh. Okay. Well, the captain will walk closer to the catwalk and lean over and look down. And her eyes will sort of focus for a moment, and she'll say... I recognize that one. She's from the Hall of Heroes. Very well, send her up. And the cleric will bow and step aside and allow you access to the ladder. Okay, I will climb up and speak with her. Okay, she does have a couple of uh, burly kind of soldiers next to her. The uh, guys riding the elevator with the warhead uh, started to take the warhead off and are carrying it over towards where the captain is positioned. Uh, would, I, would I know this captain before I was put on ice? 
No, she she's yeah. she she would have been like a low rank before then. Mm. But uh, well, give me a roll to see just how well you may have known her past. And your intelligence, and you don't have total recall, right? No, I do not. I don't think I do. Let me double check. I don't think you do I do have a logis implant. Um, well, okay, I'm going to say you know her family name. The Lob name have long been captains of the Omega and long been commanding officers. There's a family tradition for them to have the, um, what's the, the, uh, there's the family tradition, basically, that their their name has the ship. Yeah, the right to rule. Captain Lob? Yes, you're a Romanov, aren't you? Yes. Yes, it's, it's strange. You, you look just like one of the portraits in the Hall of Heroes. Yes, I served on the Omega doing the doing on that engagement. Why so, and the honor be put into the hall? Yeah, you look. Well, I suppose you've got those wonderful rejuve treatments. Hmm? They've been declining mine. They they muddle with the mind. Sadly, no. No. You've come to say goodbye to the ship that you uh, serve then, have you? I have come to preserve the ship and its legacy. Its legacy? She'll turn and glare at you. It may have been led astray with it in recent years, but it is not re beyond redemption. The redemption Absolutely. we can re achieve today is the ultimate redemption. I think that having it burn, destroying it, would serve its redemption better than continued service to the Imperium. It has been tainted beyond repair. Any attempts to serve the Imperium will only weaken the Imperium. Taints can be cleansed. Ha! You obviously haven't been here that long, then. Twenty-five years we have been branded traitor, and we were told that this was only a temporary measure. And it was the attack by the so wonderful sisters of battle, that opened my eyes at last. Twenty-five years, we have been a traitor vessel. It was no game. It was... For twenty... You dare interrupt me, girl. She'll grip For the scabbard of her sword. For years, tightly. this ship has been declared traitorous by a man who has lost himself to his rage. We Man were declared traitor not for destroying the capital of the subsector. We used we our entire orbital bombardment arsenal to destroy a holy city. By order of the Inquisition, I understand. Yes, well, then you don't Believe understand, because there has never been an Inquisitor on this ship. Twenty-five years... I spent allowing that Messiason and his three friends and all their little minions run about the place. I was going from pirate den to pirate den and slaver guild. You know what I've learned? There was never an Inquisitor aboard this ship. Really? And what really? evidence do you have to the statement? I was invited to see them depart. 
uh, what was it, two weeks ago? Yes, two weeks ago, I was invited to see them off. Yes, I saw the Nikaisen fellow, and uh, he, he mentioned that the Inquisitor appreciated the hospitality, but uh, there was no Inquisitor there. <laughs> the man either thinks me a fool or he's a fool himself. As it may, since Macariuson has left ship, someone else will be put in charge of it. You will condemn those who have fallen you to a death they do not deserve. All of them deserve the death on this ship. How else will they be cleansed to be rejoined with the Emperor? I bring them salvation. They serve and see... They serve and earn their salvation greater by continued service to the Imperium that the Emperor has decided to, has in his great grace, has formed and to continue its reign in this galaxy, universe. There'll be a moment where the Captain will look at you as if she's just like a light bulb going off in her head. And uh, does Alex? What weapons does Alexandra have on her? A bolt pistol on her hip. That's it. She only has her sidearm. Well, she just caught getting, got out okay. of the freaking med bay. She wouldn't be being able to be fully armed. She would have her okay. armor. That's about it. Well, um, the cap is going to look to one of her special operatives, and. Um, Say, Sergeant, uh, unbuckle your scabbard and hand it to the young miss, Romanov. And the soldier will kind of sling his gun over his shoulder and he'll unbuckle his belt and pull his sword scabbard free, sword still in the scabbard, and offer it to Alexander Romanov. Take it, this is how you wish to end this? 25 years ago, my trusted first mate, Fenton, was declared a heretic because she saw through this false inquisitor lie. And a sister of battle did battle her. And, well... Trenton was revealed to have affiliated herself with dark designs. Perhaps in this moment we shall see if you or I is truly the one at fault. And with one hand she holds her scabbard, with the other she holds the hilt of the blade. wish to end it this way I will give you the honor of dying in battle instead of dying as a traitor that's going to well you know what willpower rule for the captain she'll, she'll scowl but she'll say you mind your language Miss Romanov and how else am I supposed to perceive this situation as to what you're doing? You shall see all too clearly the moment before I take your head. She will draw her blade slowly to make sure that you understand that she is giving you time to prepare. I would draw the scabbard as well. Draw the blade. Okay. She's probably better at this than I am. No? Mm-hmm. And so we shall roll the initiatives. <laughs> ah, it's six now. Yay! <laughs> yeah, it's pretty clear who's going first here. Okay. So the captain shall say, on guard. Uh, 
On guard, man. Forty. No, 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 you have to declare what kind of attack you're doing. I'm just going to straight up attack. I don't have any special melee. Well, attacks. no, no, but everybody has access to a plethora of melee options without any talents. Yeah, so there's oh, teaming, gonna... there's defensive, oh, yeah. there's oh, yeah. maneuvering. I was going to go. I was going to go for a just a quick aim and go for a quick thrust, try to get within her guard. Okay, so uh, plus ten aim and attack. Yeah. So, uh, since you are in confined spaces, you're aboard a ship, your DC would have been 50 for that, which uh, is now her opportunity to parry. And believe it or not, that's a failure. So, you get first blood. Hmm. Uh, the sword is plus strength bonus. Okay, what? Yeah, so it's. Okay. D10 plus strength. So, three in your case. Okay. Yes! Oh, most palpable hit to start us off with. Bravo, bravo indeed. And now uh, it shall be her turn. What? Uh, what? What do you mean, Shelby? Did I say Shelby? I, I heard Shelby as well. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Use it, Shelby. Yeah. <laughs> <Some reason. laughs> um, okay. I I I didn't realize that. Uh, Freudian slip, maybe. Suddenly, Galia spins out through the wall. I mean, what? <clears throat> Where the hell the am I? <laughs> captain's turn. The captain is going to attempt a um. The hell's it called again? Faint. That's it. She's going to attempt a faint. So this is an opposed roll. Hers is a success. Okay. And you have and to do a roll as well. Uh, weapon skill based. Okay. She has now consumed your opportunity to either parry or dodge. Okay. And now she's going to attempt her attack. Which is a failure. Yes. She's an old lady. She's failing. Alexandra, your turn. Her fainting made it go wide. Aim again, going for another thrust. <laughs> That's a failure. It could also be potentially something more. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Yeah, 1d10 for... Cornflakes. Ha! Ah. At least it happens in a melee duel, so this could work in my favor, hopefully. All right. Um, Have I just been invoked? Uh, <laughs> well, a, a Bobob, would you like me to roll, or would you like Fungi to roll? I figure I want Fungi to roll. He's more in touch with his inner corn. One D one hundred, Fungi. <clears throat> Corrupt fury. Don't like the sound of that. The triggerer earns the ability to trigger corrupt fury for the duration of the encounter. Corrupt Fury functions like Righteous Fury, but instead triggers on a damage roll of 8. Corrupt Fury must be confirmed for the first roll, but not any subsequent rolls in the same series, just like regular Righteous Fury. Corrupt Fury does not prevent someone from also earning Righteous Fury in the same attack if multiple damage dice are rolled. Additionally, both Righteous Fury and Corrupt Fury share the same confirmation roll. Any time which Corrupt Fury is triggered, the attacker must roll to test willpower or earns 1d8 corruption points. Each subsequent Corrupt Fury roll in the same series of damage rolls incurs a cumulative negative 10 to that willpower test. Could be worse, I just don't have to roll an 8. 
you know who you want to roll that eight. I do. I want to kill this bitch. It's sweet. It's so awful. Somebody it's, kill me. It's fated. Yeah. So, basically, the captain will say, despite your first little bit of luck, I'm not going to go easy on you. I still have had to be hit, ma'am. Okay, well, yeah, you're gloating. That's just uh, suicidal, ain't it? So, um, she is going to use a... Oh, a vital attack. Yes, yes. Let's go with a vital attack. Okay. So, first half aim, then vital attack called to the... Um, this is a rending weapon. So, um, what would be fun? You know what? I'm just going to go to that head. She's going to attempt a vital attack on your head. Okay. And uh, you do get a chance to attempt to parry or dodge. Dodge is better for me. So that would be plus 20, so the DC for this is 67. You have plus 20 dodge? Yeah, I put everything I could in dodge first. Oh, so you do. Okay. Because I built it, for, she's not. I really, really built it for chances in melee, so I just put a lot in dodge. Fuck. <laughs> <sighs> the old bomb's a bit faster than I thought. Okay, so this is to confirm how much. Uh, th this will not be actual damage. This is to see if she inflicts more than. Well, wait. What is your toughness anyway? It's toughness three, right? is three, and I have an armor of five all over my body. Wait. Um, you said you only grabbed your pistol because you're right out of the med bay. I'm not. I'm gonna say you're not wearing your armor. I you never had time. Said earlier, I would have had my armor and my. Okay, I would have said I had my armor and my pistol earlier, but okay. Wearing armor inside the ship? Yeah. When I left, because I went in with my armor, it would be more than likely when I went in to the med bay. I would have left with it. They would have probably sent it back to your quarters and locked it up because you've got three servants who you never actually called on during this whole mission. But um, I, I, I've been operating under the assumption you've been running around the ship like the way most everybody runs around the ship. Um, you know, he's wearing... paranoid. All right, fair enough. Okay, so if she's wearing her armor, then I do have to make this roll. And with the penetration, um, that will be just enough. And so now what happens is we get a vital attack to the head. Now well, you're lucky. The attack tears skin from the target's face, dealing one level of fatigue. If the target is wearing a helmet, there is no effect. Okay. Of course, this complicates the whole thing of her recognizing you as a Romanov. But, uh, well, I, I'll, I'll say you put your helmet on before the battle, despite the dishonorable nature of doing such a task. So, your turn. So, your turn. Again, trying to slash you up with an aim and strike. I fail again. Okay. Well, now knowing that you're an armored opponent. Like... Oh, Christ. This old biddy is just not doing so well. Basically, it looks like your arm's just sort of spazzing in front of you at the moment, and she kind of repostures herself as if she's very uncomfortable. Granny's having a stroke! I don't think that's a success. Do you, do you aiming again? Yeah. Be sure to declare stuff like that. I, I'm always aiming because that's the only thing she can do. She doesn't know anything else, and she has pretty low will... Oh weapon skills, so she's always going to be aiming. 
Now, do remember, though, that you do have options such as calling a shot, doing a feint, attempting to stun, doing a guarded attack, doing, well, you have a jetpack, so you could always fly backwards and then attempt to charge, you know. But uh, at the moment, this is kind of a whiff fest, so it's kind of interesting in that regard. Or use a turn to use a full aim and attack yes. next turn. Okay. Which... Mm-hmm. The captain is going to actually attempt. Although, let me just confirm here that it is... Yeah. Okay, yep, so she she's basically taking a moment for herself. Uh, she's... <sighs> she's just going to try to press the advantage. Another aim and strike. Okay, and Perry. Oops. That will be a successful parry and a counterattack. It is a failure. <laughs> and, oh wait, she was doing a full aim, so the counterattack would consume the aiming. That will actually connect. Okay. And a 40 is a headshot. Okay. And with your armor, even with the penetration, it's not sufficient damage. Crap. (laughs) But now it is her turn. And she's going to aim again. Your turn. Press the advantage still. And once again, uh, parry. No, this time that is not a success. Uh, It's a 30. Okay, so... Uh, Sorry, just uh, trying to do my mathematical equations. You get another pluck upon the captain. She's bleeding, and she's getting quite furious looking. And um, this was her aim to turn. So, special attack. Hello, testing? Yeah, you're still here. Uh, Jeff, oh, okay. DC, just you know? disconnected. I thought maybe we lost the server. No, it looks like the server's still up, surprisingly. Yeah. So, Jess, if you can hear us, we've lost you on map tools. Okay. Do I get a dodge on this? Yes, you get to attempt to dodge, and you're really going to want it. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> Okay, so um, <laughs> okay. Welcome back, Jess. Yeah, that's not that okay. bad. However, she does also get the bonus benefit of penetration uh, for her perception right so i of vengeance or no it's weakness i for weakness now that doesn't succeed well okay you lucked out this time a bow bob even though she got mm-hmm. her assassin strike with the penetration and so um with the pen i do believe that will be Seven damage to Romanov. Ow. You are now heavily wounded. I figured that. And that's eight wounds remaining? Yes, yes. Yes, I believe so. So basically, um, she 
clips right through your helmet and gets a big old gash through your neck. Ow. Let's see. Do I have quick draw out of curiosity? Can I just quickly pull the pistol and shoot at point blank? <laughs> Do the Indiana Jones? Do I have quick draw? I do have quick draw. Okay, I can my pistol. The captain will say to you that you are going to lose this battle for the Emperor is on my side. I know it's your night, but don't overthink things. Will you dishonor yourself in front of the crew? Inquisition. I'm going to do the Inquisition and do what needs to be done. I'm going to quick draw my pistol and take a pot shot at it. Give me an intelligence roll first. Okay. I have quick draw. And Jess, you could share that with the rest of the group. Okay, so you may do your quick draw, and um, you're doing a in-combat attack roll. And with aiming as well, or not? I can't. You can't aim with a pistol in melee yeah, combat, can. I think. Yeah, oh, you, you can? can aim, you just don't get point-blank bonus. Oh, yeah, the aim and fire. Okay, BS. Fuck. So that will be a miss, but you have now brought Shane to this battle. And that was your Mahler pistol? Yeah. Okay. And, um, yeah, that would be your turn. Captain is going to spit bile kind of uh, insult uh, in your native uh, towering Omega language. Basically saying your entire family line is a curse and a pox, and you just prove why the Romanovs are pathetic. And she's not actually taking a physical action at you to you or you at this moment, but she is spouting all that hurtful words. Because you brought a pistol to a sword fight. Okay. <laughs> I do whatever needs to be done to serve the Emperor. That is my calling now. Okay, and can I five foot step and then take a shot at it, called shot at her? If you're attempting to do a uh, disengage as a half action, you have to roll agility to succeed. If you fail, they get an attack against you. I'll try that. I have pretty good agility. I've been rolling well tonight, but eh. Nah, that's not going to be enough. Okay, so you take your five foot step, uh, but she also gets a free attack on you with her aim bonus. <laughs> and that will succeed because of her aim bonus. Mm -hmm. God damn this old lady and her weak arm. <sighs> uh, so yeah, you took your five foot. You now got a plus 30 for uh, point blank range. Called shot to the head, and I do have it so I don't take oh. any penalties. So you dead eye or whatever it was? Yeah, I have both of those now. Yes! Did we give you sharpshooter? Oh, we did give you sharpshooter. Okay, I just didn't record it in both places. Yeah. Huh. And um, do we get Malal? <laughs> I'm interested in this now because nothing demonic is happening. What is he going to do? Your previous corrupt fury bonus is being negated. Okay. Hey. All is working out. The bonus is being negated, not the penalty. Oh. Okay, so D10 plus seven. As she dodges. Uh, all right. Thank you for reminding me. Dodge. Okay. 
and your ball roll damage. <sighs> Magos Graham, you suddenly receive a report that, uh, oh yes, it's tearing. Sorry, roll, roll the other D10 for tearing. I forgot about that. Seven instead, so it is 14. Yes, uh, so Magos, uh, you are receiving a report that um, the drive chamber has just been hit by an explosive charge of low yield. Isn't technically, isn't this guy right behind the Magos, right behind the captain? The drive chamber is fucking huge. Okay. You miss her, you're hitting the drive chamber. Okay. <laughs> That's why I made you roll intelligence earlier. Oh, okay. Um... But uh, yeah, that is just shy of enough damage to cause something very bad from happening. Um, but uh, basically, <laughs> it'll be in this moment where the captain will shout to the men, This woman is dishonorable! Detonate the warhead now! Okay, can do I get an action now? Um, you can notice she's kind of hunched, and uh, if you want to try and read what she's going to do, you can attempt to roll scrutiny. I'll can I'll try roll scrutiny because I have an idea now that I'm at range. I fail. Okay, you don't know what her plans are, but uh, the men she just shouted at are. Beep boopity booping on the warhead. Hey, can I possibly just bum rush her with my Yeah. Because I can't really so they go like shit if she dodges again, I'm gonna hit the drive core again. Can I charge with my jetpack at this range? It wouldn't be a charge, but um you could attempt to grapple with your jetpack. Okay. Then you're just leaving the guys to play with the warhead, though. We really don't have a. Tr Who's? <sighs> Fucking hell! There's four people operating the warhead. Can I? Can I do what I did with the tech priest on the Celestia Heaven and try to just? Torpedo them. So you want to use your jetpack to basically do a bull rush attack on them. Yeah. Try to do what I did with those tech priests. Try to get them away from the charge. Well, there are four of them on the warhead, so you'd have to start with one and then figure out what you're doing with the others. I'm just going to try to just, <clears throat> just try to get him all to move and just like straight torpedo kind of thing. I have to take a risk. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not sure what you're... I'm saying there's four guys around a warhead. You're not going to be able to get them all simultaneously. Oh, I thought, it was, like, I thought so... it was the charge. So they were just like all like working with the charge against it. I know there was like two guys mm -hmm. on each side. Uh, I'm... Sorry for not having the full diagram set up. Yeah, I thought they were just I thought they were just like having it like up against it and they were playing with it like it was a detonation charge. I didn't know it was like a full on torpedo with two guys on each side playing with well, it. Well well it's not a full on torpedo, it's a warhead component. But there are four people operating it. Four people around one large object that is highly volatile explosive. I don't know. I don't see how I can fucking stop it at this point without killing the captain. So I'm just gonna try to kill the captain. Okay. So I'm just gonna try to shoot her again because that's the best chance I have. Then so what? Aim and shoot or what? half aim and shoot. Okay. Aiming for her head again. 
Okay, and once again. She does not succeed this time on the dodge. 11, here's the tearing. Yes! 16. 16 okay. and 4. And basically her final words before death are save the Omega! Destroy the Omega! And then boop, goes her head. And the men are working on the detonator while the Spec Ops guy add to initiative. And Captain goes down, so their turn. Technically, there's actually two of these guys. Blada 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 blada. Uh, you may attempt your dodge. Fucking hell. Not confirmed this time. At least only one of them hits me. Uh, it's full auto. What's well, yeah. everyone's still pretty high? It depends on the ballistic skill. It's, it's, uh, so they're inside a ship, so they get that bonus. I thought that, that, I thought that bonus was only for weapon skill. Oh, you're right. Okay. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. so how very fortunate for you, it is a single hit. Which will not penetrate your armor. If I burn my last fate point, can I try to command check to get them all to stop what they're doing and listen to what I say? Try and pull a Krios on us? Pretty much that's all I'm asking. Because at this point, if I, I don't have the time to kill enough of those guys not de for not to, them to detonate the charge. So, yeah, here's the thing. Um, you got the two options of either A, you attempt that command roll to get them under control and then burn your fate point to give it that extra oomph. But if it fails, then you're out of fate point to save your life. And we could end up seeing the end of the Omega and the end of Alexandra. Alternatively, you make your command roll without the extra oomph of the fate burning. And if you fail, you still at least have that fate point in reserve to say that, well, the Omega may not be belonging to Alexandra. She'll at least survive this encounter and the Omega will still be mostly in one piece. Go big or go home. So what does that mean? I'm going to try to get them to obey what I command and burn the fade point. Okay. The command for command will and then burn? Mm-hmm. Well, it's not as spectacular as Krios. Yeah. Well, but... we all can't be Krios. <laughs> I'm Truth. sure Fungi appreciates that. But basically, um, the men arming the bomb, seeing that the captain is dead. Well, did you want did you want a particular speech to give? The com the com the captain has failed in her duty to serve the emperor and the imperium, who orders are from henceforth nullified 
stand down and you will be spared punishment. So attempting to um, bribe them with, it's okay, guys, just put down the bomb and I won't kill you all. I mean, punish you all, whip you all, flay you all, eventually kill well, you all. Well, yeah, they, they were just following commands from a crazy person. I'm not going to fault for that. Yep, okay, fair enough. But because your role wasn't spectacular enough, spec ops full autos. Okay. One miss is one, hit, one to 30. Are you going to attempt to dodge? Yes. Uh, how many degrees is that? Uh, for me, dodge, that is 67. So that'd be three degrees yeah. at least. Well, then basically you, uh, by like the glint of your eye to the left, that they those two are still pointing their guns at you. So in the moment that they pull the trigger... Alexandra is actually able to kind of shimmy her way to the side that she's not where they're pointing their guns at as they pull the triggers. Her turn. So they start fitting with the bomb, but these two guys are still trying to kill me. Yep. Uh, is the distance right? Yeah. Sorry, let me add the other guy's token. I don't want to shoot at them because I'm much closer to the core. Fuck it. <laughs> this guy. Half aim, fire, called shot to his head. I still got point blank bonus plus the aim. Okay. I do believe. I think so. No, I'm giving them the full uh, point blank, so you should get full point blank as well. Hell. Yes. He does not succeed on his dodge. Seven. Eleven damage to his skull. Okay. No, not down. quite dead yet. Although they are about to be something else. <laughs> These guys have really shitty aim for spec ops. Kind of shocked by the captain's death. <laughs> well, I was going to say, clearly they've been her drinking buddies for the past while. <laughs> Same dude. And not switching it up at all. Same dude. All right. Well, then this will be the last bullet in the clip. Yeah, I know. This time, however, he does dodge. Roll damage for the drive core. Uh, eight damage at most. No, more than eight damage at most. Okay, so... Yeah. Eleven. Eleven. Uh, engine Seer, you are receiving additional reports of small explosive fire upon the drive core. Is enough to do anything yet? Sorry, what? Is it enough to do anything terrible yet? <laughs> it's... Well, the, the Engine Seer might do something terrible to you. Well, I'm going to have a sin talking to her. She raises the issue about this. Well, oh, spec ops are reloading their guns. Okay. Charge this guy. And I melee really... charge? Yeah. Don't know what's going to happen because of this. I don't know everything I get. Ah, it's a fail. Okay. 
Um, since this is kind of dragging on, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, we're going to shortify this for you, Abo Bob. Mm. Um, I'm going to do one more roll for each of them, and then I'll get one more roll from you. Mm -hmm. And based on who wins the most, we'll determine just how potentially bad this might get for Alexandra. So, um, see if I can remember their names. And Tenant... Fuck, what was their names? Okay, there was Cox, um, Dix, Cox. John, Wood. There were two more. <laughs> Pex, that's it, Pex. Oh, are you finally getting the puns of all the uh, player character names? I just can't hold it any longer. What? Is the next guy just called penis? Well, they're, they're all different puns on penis names, yes. But um, this, so there was John, H Wood, Pex, uh, or no, just sorry, Peck, or yeah, so like Pecker, Peck. Um, who was the last one? There were six of them. I know, well, I can't remember. <sighs> well, they both did shitty. Do your roll. Does a 100. Mm hmm. <laughs> I had a 79% chance to roll low, and I rolled a 99. Got 99 problems, not... and. This is Lynch one. is everyone. I blame Shelby. Okay. So, Alexandra. You're going to black out. Okay. And when you come to, you'll be standing in front of Master Secretarius Lexi in the hallway. I look a little confused. Prosty, are you there? Yes, I am here, but I... What could I say? I don't know. She she this. basically she, she she basically walked towards you in the hallway, looking kind of dazed. I'm going to say you said her name once, and then she'll just sort of shake her head and come to, you. and that'll be uh, when Abo Bob you have control of her. Now she's just going to stand there confused for a moment. You said she's going to go like, how did I get back here? You walked. Uh, uh, are you all right, Miss? Uh... Romanov, Taking a what's, couple blows. what's the situation with the uh, uh, engine? Is it safe? I'm not sure. I... Last thing you remember was blowing up the captain's head and telling guys to stop playing with the war ad. They backed off. That's exactly what I'm going to say. I... Captain is... been relieved of her presumed command and I believe I was able to get him to stop playing with the warhead after that I'm not 100% sure how I got in, back into this hall you didn't drink from the bottle I hope I don't think I did hmm. kind of busy dueling the captain by the way um uh, Secretarius, you can see blood trickling down her shoulder from a neck wound underneath her helmet. Uh, well, that's not important. We we need to get you to medbay med right now. Uh, is there any no. soldiers nearby? No. What we need to make sure is that the drive core is secure. We're going back in there. Yes. Yes. Uh, is there people around, you know, who are trying to save the ship instead of exploding it? But people at this point are just kind of milling about very 
um, they're, they're no longer fighting each other. They're, they're kind of standing down. Some are trying to run away. Others are waiting for their punishment. Um, okay. They've been broken. Yes. Quickly, let's go look. Uh, um, and the... Okay, basically, as you guys are coming in there, you're going to hear the, the hooping and the hollering of the commissar as he's basically shooting people in the hallway on his way to the drive chamber. Uh, is he jumping up and kicking his heels together? Maybe a bit. Oh. <laughs> blam, blam, what a wonderful day. <laughs> So yeah, he's coming up behind you guys. Basically, he's got a bunch of soldiers in tow. And anytime anybody even looks like they're about to run away from him, blam. And then anybody else nearby just kind of falls in line behind the commissar. Commissar, stand down. I believe the drive core is now secure. <laughs> well, we should check it out still. <laughs> Don't shoot the drive core. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, that sounds a lot like how I'd be picturing him talking his real life. Okay, yeah, we turn him back to what's in the what exactly is going on in the drive core? At the moment, the cleric is uh, steeped in prayer down on the ground, and the uh, captain's headless body is oozing blood off the catwalk above you. Um. There doesn't appear to be anyone next to the warhead at the moment, but from your current position, you can't confirm that because they could basically be obscured from your line of sight. Kamazar, secure the warhead, but don't touch it until we can get the Magos down here. (laughs) He points at uh, the cleric with the barrel of his bolt pistol. No, we don't have the authority to... Ex- formally execute a confessor. And he'll go up the elevator and uh, inspect the explosive device. What are you guys doing? Where are her guards? Remember having her having two guards with her? Looking at her around they would be on the upper catwalk because that's where you did the duel right now you're still down below let's get up there so you're just leaving the confessor to prayer to to pray kneeled on the ground well you said there was a group of uh, soldiers with the commissar yep uh, leave them to handle the confessor Willing would say. It. Testing? Uh, Hello? Yes. Uh, subdue the confessor if he gets violent, but leave him to his prayers. If he tries anything funnier, subdue him. Yeah, I'm gonna go up to the. I'm gonna go with. I was gonna go with the sick terrorist to go up to the captain's body. Go okay. Up there. okay. So the two um, spec op soldiers are missing, as are the four people who were mucking about with the explosive. Where did they go? Magos, we've secured the drive core and there was still an improvised explosive device on here. We need you and whoever else can disarm explosives down here immediately. Chess, uh, the there's something I'm... you may be forgetting. Take time. <laughs> Uh, 
The tech priest grew larger with excitement. She became engorged. But yeah, so now he's penetrating the troops. Yeah, Alexander, was, let's wrap it up. So what are you doing I was, here? I w all I was going to do is make sure this is secured. I would give orders to secure the confessor and see where the other people who were in this room went. And then I would take the captain's sword, see it, and then make it, make it back to the bridge. Uh, and uh, however, uh, Graham will send you one more uh, calm message. Um, okay. The blade. I would look for this device he he speaks of. She, but uh, not that you can tell when it's a tech priest. Yeah. Um, well, do a search roll, see if you can find it. Search roll. I have no search. Yeah. Oh, never mind. I still pass. Okay. You do find a very odd-looking uh, object. You're not sure if you could call it a device. However, it does seem to have a push button on it. But its de design is very non-imperial. It may even, well, uh, give me an evaluate roll. Uh, evaluate. Uh, I also don't would, have. Would you allow Willings to take a look at this device, or would you keep it from his vision? Well, I just was told it's heretical, so it is an Inquisition matter now. So no. Okay. No. I would fail that because I have no evaluate. Yes, well, you, you, all you can do is determine it's no Imperial object you've ever seen before. Well, I'm going to hand this over to the prop dude up the chain. Good, like, oh, I found this on the captain. As soon as I can get in contact with them. Okay. So, um... Would you all eventually reconvene on the bridge, or what's what's your plan of attack here? I would say we on the bridge. Okay, you it's will time. receive reports that Jemadar is leading her people to basically suppress riots, mainly non-violently. But when they do turn violent, there are no casualties. She seems to have this in the bag. <sighs> She I'm would also she, she would also send a request to see if you guys want her help with the decks that are outside of her jurisdiction. Not at this moment in time. I would before I do that, I would need I would definitely seek medical attention and speak with her to this on a formal matter. No. She has become. He's a player on this ship, and I'm going to talk to her before I even risk doing more in her favor. All right. Well, she'll hold her sections of the ship and prevent any further damage from taking place. Keep everything nice and tight and tucked in. What she wishes to do for Vern. Okay. Well. Uh, so uh, the engines here was going to return to the engines, Jess. The drive chamber, or <laughs> okay, and you guys were returning back to the bridge. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, above up, you may have noticed a few of the tokens' names have changed. Mm. Turner Page Turner, Marius, and Elba. Who's changed? The first one you read was one of the ones that have changed. And it Amber Dexter's that one as well. H, H Tanner, Joe, yes. Jacklis. No. Marnie's Vex. No. Nope. Commander Harry Cox. <laughs> yes. Okay. A lot of dick jokes. A lot no, of dick no, jokes. No, no, just that one. The other two were something of a personal in joke. But Frosty's character, Jess's character, and 
when you read them out loud, you should realize. Able and willing. Harry Cox. Holly Graham, which if I remember correctly is the name of a store. Oh, Holly Graham, never mind. Duh. And the other two that uh, it was Pay Turner, 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 Turner and, and, and Ambidextrous. Ambidextrous. Yeah, I catch it. <laughs> uh, uh, who am I going to punish for this? All right of us. I, I problem is I had to reward one of you. <laughs> because well, I figure you'd need to know before you made your final decision. So you come back to the bridge. Cox, things have been difficult for you up here. Joe? Uh, Cox, hard. Uh, Sorry, I'm getting sleepy. I kind of yeah. used out so, what's going on. The, basically, throughout the events in the drive chamber, you've been having a hell of a time getting the rest of the ship under control, save for those parts that Jemadar had uh, her men secure. So she sent an offer uh, to Alexandra, which you may have also received, saying... Would you like Jemadar to help secure the rest of the ship? Uh, Alexandra said no thanks. She has other things to deal with first. But Cox is impede over that. She tried to, try to take chance to take more ground. Okay. So, uh, I'm not sure what you're saying, Frosty, uh, but at the lates, I will say this when we get back to the bridge. At the lates? I'm... Frosty, you there? Yes? What, what, this message you sent me, what do you mean? Oh, this is an old message. Never mind. This is an ancient message. Yeah. Ah, uh, the was new message when I was, was doing the intros. Jess was sending a, another link. That's what the new message is. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, back to the bridge then. Cox, okay. you've been having a very difficult time getting control of the ship back in order. Testing one two seven. Yes. Okay, waiting for waiting for Cox to see if he has any replies to this. Joe. Ah, uh, no. You done for the night, Joe? I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. okay I was speed this up. Go like. So, all right. Um, we're just trying That's to establish: kit. is Cox going to make a move to try and secure leadership of the ship? No. <laughs> so he, he's allowing duty to come first. Yep. Okay. Um, Magos hologram. Uh, you you're stuck at the drive core, but will you attempt to microbead your attempt to muscle in on Alexandra? Jess is writing an epic ballad, apparently. I'm going to have to head to bed pretty soon as well. Damn it. Sadly, Alexandra is of military lineage, so she would not choose the Magos on that principle alone. Their duty is to keep the ship running and the job of everybody else to use this ship. Well, well uh, Willing would uh, basically drive his bargain with that uh, if, you know, there's, they need a uh, someone level-headed and uh, smart running these things, and also 
if he would be on the helm, so to say, uh, he could, you know, also help her with the promise she was uh, making in that little meeting they had. After all, after, with that, you know, uh, with everything on the ship uh, fine and dandy for him, uh, he would possibly know more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes, you raise a good point, Willing. So, I'm going to do a compromise. Hawks? Joe's kind of out of it, so... Yeah, you know no, what? I'm just going to um, go... I'm going to suggest that um, we... Could we all meet up tomorrow to kind of finalize this, um, possibly around 6 p.m. Eastern? Yeah, I can do Not this. Me. No. Okay. Uh, hey, what time would you What time would you be available, Joe? I don't Just for six thirty. Okay, six thirty. So uh, seven seven thirty sound good. Just to quickly wrap this up when people have more energy. I'll try. I'll try. Also, this part this last it's... bit went on way too long again. <laughs> Sorry about that. The dice rolls just were not kind. So yeah, um, that's that's. Um, that's um, sorry, Bo Bob, but I think because of the lack, general lack of energy we've got with some people who are kind of key players in this, we're yeah, going to have to call it a night right now, and then we'll reconvene tomorrow and finalize this around seven seven thirty. Well, at least you can think about uh, your logic here. I know what I'm going to do, and I'm going to run and buy and see if that works. But I definitely know for sure that Magos isn't going to get the, it, you know, is not going to get Captain shit. Thank you. Thank you. If he was, uh, good, if, <laughs> good night, Joe. I'm just saying, yeah, if the Magos was logical, he would know that he was just shit, kept on just pushing and pushing a man who he, he needed to keep calm. 